Ba-da-dum, bum, 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 ba-dum, bum, bum. Hey, folks! I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Q and A for April twenty fifth, two thousand and sixteen. Hey, okay. First of all, a couple things. Several people have complained about the time change. Ah, and I need to go turn off the sound on my main computer. Be right back. I'm Tom Vassell. All right, I'm back. Anyhow, uh, a few people have complained about the time zone change, or the time change, uh, basically. And the fact is, is that no matter what time I do it at, somebody around the world's not going to have a good time at watching this. And so I just try to do it at different times over the week. I mean, y- usually I do afternoons for me, but sometimes I do at night, and sometimes I'll do it in the morning. Although very rarely in the morning because um, I just... I, I watch my own views of the channel, and we get the fewest views in the early morning Eastern time. Okay, so anyhow, uh, secondly, uh, I know there was a lot of wind noise on Board Game Breakfast and on Weekend Review, so I am keeping that in mind. I'm going to work on that to get that done better. I did not, I was going to record some more stuff outside today, but did not because it was still windy. So I recorded 15 videos today, 11 reviews, and four of my Alphabet lists. So two of those are for next week. Um, but we have, uh, I'm just trying to get ahead a little bit. If I review that much today, then I'll get some more done Wednesday. So we'll see. Uh, we got a lot of things that we're getting done. And I also took my family out to see The Jungle Book today, which was a great movie. Really, really happy with that one. Of all the live action disney movies that one is so far my favorite i really really enjoyed that one so anyhow uh if you have questions i'm going to try to answer as many questions as i possibly can i will do so for the first half of this show in the link in the there's a link in the description of the video it's a q a where you can vote up or down questions so i'll do that there i will come back and take some from youtube at this at, at some point But don't ask them now. Wait till I say so. And I may not answer all the questions. That's just how that works. Sometimes a question may seem greatly important to you, but it's just not a question that I want to answer. All right, first question is, any progress on the Q&A fact? Actually, that's on my checklist of things to start this week. Uh, I think I'm going to start by figuring out what are the questions people ask me all the time. Uh, How do I find so much time to do everything? Um, What do I do with all the games I get rid of? How do I choose what games to review? There's probably a lot of different questions. But I will get start working on that. Not to sow discord among the vassals. I is that like the people who work for me, or something? Vassal has one S. That's also going to be in the fact. How to spell vassal? (laughs) But anyhow, but what games, if any, do you play more for the sake of your kids than because you personally like them? Well, that would be pretty much any kids game, right? I, I I mean, of course I'm playing that because my kids like it, not because of me liking it. If I play games that me I liked, I'd pick my top 100 to play with them. So it just seems like all of my... I, I guess I don't understand that question as much. Um, let's see. Are there any card versions of board games that you feel are better than the original game? Better than the original game? No, but there are some that come pretty close. Dungeon Twister comes pretty close. Kalis the card game comes pretty close. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Bang. No, that's Bang the Dice Game. So, I don't know of any off top of my head, but there's probably something. Who's my favorite villain of all time? Oh, it sounds like a good top ten list. Man, off top of my head, I really liked both of the villains from Die Hard 1 and Die Hard 3. From comics, Apocalypse, Mr. Sinister... I really like both of them as villains. Um, Gus, the chicken man, is a good villain. There's a lot. That would be a a good top ten list to do at some point. Um, Now that you're doing more top tens outside, how do you prevent people from walking in the background or getting in the way? Um, Well, um, we're doing a lot of the... In my neighborhood is a gated community, so I don't really have a lot of traffic here. At the zoo, 
The Miami Zoo is a very big zoo. By that, I mean, if you like walk all the way through the zoo, you get a good workout. A lot of people go there to work out. And it's not that crowded. So I just go and go right up against the fence with my camera. People see it and they walk around me. Most people won't do it. I usually try to set up when I don't think there's a lot of people around anyway and try to record as quickly as I can and then shut down. But I don't really care. I mean, if someone gets in the way of the video, it's not that big of a deal. I just keep going. Um, let's see. Some of these questions I have answered in the past or close enough that... Let's see. Can you think of any game me mechanisms that are so thematic they wouldn't work out of context? Not off the top of my head. I'm sure that there's something like that, but off the top of my head, I can't think of any. Pointing a gun at somebody and cashing guns? Um, let's see. The reviews by Dan and Joel are no longer appearing on the Dice Tower. Has there been a change? I hope not. Um, yes. They are no longer appearing on the Dice Tower. And it's not that there was anything bad that went down at all. In fact, I, there was nothing bad. It's just that I had to make a decision. See, I was, we were running into a few problems with having people on our weekend review and on the website itself. Was that companies were getting confused. I was having companies saying, well, we didn't send you these games because we sent them to those people. They're on your website. And I'd say, well, they're not part of the Dice Tower. Well, then why are they on your website? Uh... It was just confusing, and it was confusing to a lot of people. And then I also ran into the um, basic thing where uh, reviewers were coming to me and saying, hey, can we be on Weekend Review? So then I would have to let everybody on or be like, no, not you. You, yes, but not you. And I really didn't want to get into that kind of decision. So I am already doing that. I like to pick you. And that's how people come on our channel is I'm looking for reviewers who come on the channel so I picked those reviewers to come on the channel. Of course, I'm always looking for more and different people to be involved in doing reviews for the channel. And I figured that we better just focus on that. It's a good way to focus on our own website. And again, I have no problem talking about other great reviewers. Joel Eddie, Dan King are fantastic reviewers. And I don't mind pointing people at them. But as an official capacity, we had to tone that down because it was just getting really confusing. Um, do you ever read designer diaries? Are they meaningful? Um, I've read some in the past. I haven't read as many lately. Um, it's going to sound odd. I don't know how to explain this. Sometimes I see a designer diary and my first thought is, I don't really know who you or your game is. So I guess I'd rather play the game first and then maybe read the designer diary. If it's a, I don't really... I guess I'm not so keen on how someone put a game together until I've actually played the game itself. And then I'm more interested in how they did it. So a lot of times designer diaries come out and honestly many times they're basically just a promotion for the game, right? It's another way to get people to go look at their, play their new game that's on Kickstarter usually it seems these days. That does not mean they're not. I'm very fascinated by designers who talk about things in the past. If I played the game it's interesting to go and look at that. I've read some, but many times, uh, lately, it seems like many of them are blatant advertisements, which, again, is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not something that I'm necessarily interested in reading at that point. Can you explain the business side of Tabletop and why you support it? I've heard a few things about it, how stores get charged for promos, how it only benefits Geek and Sundry, etc. That give me pause. Well... I don't know all the details. I know a lot more than many people do because I talk to publishers and I talk to, I've talked to people like Ike and Sundry, some of them, and so not all that information is public that I can I can do. But yes, they do charge stores for the promo packs. There's different levels, although this year I believe there's only one level. Of course, this year promos aren't really that great promos anyway. But um, there's different levels that are sent out. To the, to the different stores, so those stores pay and they get the promos and then they have the events. I've always felt like this event promotes Geek and Sundry. It doesn't seem like Geek and Sundry does a lot to promote the individual stores. However, I'll still support it because that doesn't matter to me. Tabletop Day is a good day. It actually gets people out. 
the first day I was like, people aren't going to go out and play games just because Will Wheaton told them to. And I went to cool stuff and I was like, whoa, where'd all these people come from? People apparently did go out. And so I'm glad for that. Give me any excuse to get people gaming and I'm very happy for it. It is not a bad thing. Getting people to go to stores is not a bad thing. If Geek and Sundry makes money off it, what do I care? I make money on my Kickstarter too. So, I mean, I don't want to be too hypocritical on calling them out like that. So, so they make money. Big deal. But we still get together and play games. And I really, really appreciate that. <laughs> what questions are you sick of answering in Q&As in person and on email? In person, it's always when I meet somebody for the first time. And I, I explain them what they do, and their question always is, what's the best board game? Well, there's no, you know, I'm not going to be like, well, Cosmic Encounter, because that doesn't mean anything to them. If I know the person at all, I might pick a game that I think would be really good for them. Uh, in emails, I guess the question I get sick of the most, and please don't take this as any kind of negative if you send me one of these, are people who send me like a meaningful biography of themselves and the games they like and games they don't like and what a specific situation and then they want me to recommend some games to them, which requires me to read the email and to think, I mean, put a whole lot of thought into it. And so the best way to handle that, I usually send them to the uh, Dice Tower forums where they can put it up there and a lot of people will read it and a lot of people will give them answers. And again, I'm not trying to discourage any of that, uh, that except maybe don't ask me what my favorite game is because, well, you guys already know because you watch my show. On breakfast earlier, you gave some great pros and cons to invite-only game meetups. When you host an invite-only, do you normally select the game you want to play and then choose who to invite, or do you choose who you want to invite and then the game? I choose the people first, although occasionally I will say, like if at my house, I'll be like, hey, I'm playing this game. Who wants in on this game? And so I'll see who wants to play the game, or I'll tailor it because I know I'm inviting these people over. For some meetups, though, most of the time, I don't ever run a meetup that's just one game. So for those, then I'll just play whatever game I feel like. And the people that don't want to play that game, they can start another game. Uh, what other versus internet games are you planning? Watch and find out. Mostly, I say that because I don't have them all planned out. Sometimes I'll be like, well, let's try this one. And we'll say, well, how about this one? And not every, I'm telling you, I love all these games but not all of them work against the internet. And some only work when we have multiple people doing it. So like last um, last Friday, I thought it went really well because we had Derek running the camera and I played for the people so that I was able to keep things hidden from Sam and so that worked really well. And if we can do more of that, you might see a bit more of that in the future. Um... Let's see, if you played a game of D&D, which class race combo would you play and why? It all depends on what I was in the mood and what everyone else would take. Like, I like to play a paladin maybe, but if someone else wants to be a paladin, I'd be fine. I would probably end up picking a bard. Um, I'll say a half-elf bard. I've always been partial to the half-elves. But if they let you play a weird race, I always like to play one of the weird races if, they're, if, if, if that's allowable. Um... And if you can take like a, a kind of a one of the more unusual ones, and I'm thinking more Pathfinder here, but like there's Swashbuckler. If I can go down that route, that's something I'm, I'm interested in doing. Something that just feels different than everybody else. Um, what trends in the board game industry and community make you want to go postal? Nothing ever want, makes me want to go postal. I'll yell about stuff, but I don't ever want to get postal about it. Um, I, if there's some trends that I don't like, I'm not a big fan of the micro game trend. Let's say, how small can we make this game? Big deal. But again, I don't want to go postal, to clarify on all this. I'm not so big of sometimes, I don't see this as much now, but there's still, uh, I'll see like a small game. That's an okay game. And the people who made that game were like, rah, 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 shish, kumba, this game's the greatest, holla. And then they get other people to say it, and then they'll say it about that person's game, so there's like a tit for tat, everyone's saying it, and you're like, wow, these games must be amazing. And, they're, and I play them, and I'm like, whoa, these, these games are not amazing. And I guess that would be a trend that I'm really opposed to, 
and this one does get me a little irritated, is a lot of publishers are out there, and they're all fighting for games. Okay? They're like, oh, I want a game, I want a game, I want a game. And there are some publishers who are publishing clearly mediocre games. Clearly mediocre games. And, they, and you can almost tell that they know that they're, they're mediocre because they'll be like, yeah, this is a great game. And it's like, yeah, it's not a great game. But they're publishing it because they want to puff up their library and have more games. And then these games are gone, not within a year, but sometimes within like three, six months. And it's like, ah, just publish amazing games. I wish more publishers would do that. Still don't want to go postal on it, though. Did you try poutine when you visited Canada? I did, and it was delicious. My favorite was jerk chicken poutine. What are your opinions on a recent Board Game Geek game page des redesign? Well, first of all, it just goes to show me how much people hate change. This was not something that they was like not talked about. I saw this redesign a long time ago. Was it a year ago? It was a long time ago. And I know it's been alpha, I mean, in beta for a while, and people were looking at it. They switched it over, and then everyone went bonkers on, on Board Game Geek. Uh, I, I, I'm still getting used to it, so, because even though I, I had access to it a while ago, I switched back because it was easier for me to add videos to Board Game Geek on the older website. Um, I, uh, I, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. I think it's fine. It seems like it's going to be useful. The only thing I don't like about the new Board Game Geek design is I wish they had waited until all the pages were using the same design, because it's kind of disconcerting to go back and forth from the game pages to the rest of it and since i spend a good chunk of my time on board game geek in the rest of it in the dice tower guilds and geek lists and stuff and then i go to a game page and i was like whoa am i on a different site i'm not but i'm not opposed to it against it and besides that's the way it's going to be so i'm going to get used to it even if i hated it i would still get used to it but i don't hate it it's fine um do you remember when you first heard the word meeple? When was it? I don't. It was on the internet way back in the day. People were talking about, it was, had something to do with Carcassonne. People just called them meeples. That's the first time I've heard them. What review in our video are you proudest of? I think the video that I'm still happiest with, uh, and I forget the exact connection to it, but was, it was an intro to one of my top 100s. And we did a black and white old timey video and this was, I think, maybe the first or second video Z Garcia was in, where we talked about how the vassals review games, and I had Eric review a voiceover, and it just, I just, it just came out perfectly. I was always very pleased with that video. I was also always pleased with my video, how to play games with kids, to the point where we're going to actually redo that one at some time. Um, cringing the most? Oh, any of those early ones? Even, man, what's really caught me off guard is I was, I've been like occasionally going back to videos from last year, and I'm like, wow. So fat. Wow, it just those make me cringe to the point where I wonder if I think that in a year when I look at my videos now. Um, do you have a separate area in the house for your family gaming or do you use your work gaming room? Usually we game in here. Sometimes we'll game downstairs on the kitchen table or on the floor somewhere. What are your all time favorite Super Nintendo games? All right, well, Final Fantasy 3 for sure. Super Mario RPG, which is an underrated game, but I, it, it was amazing. It still is amazing. I would still play it today. In fact, I think I would play that one over the Paper Marios. The Paper Marios are fine, but I really like that one. Uh, Super Metroid, great game. Uh, Legends of Zelda, I mean, or Link to the Past. Oh, that's, those are four right there. Um, Star Fox. Um, Super Mario World, um, Donkey Kong Country, Super Nintendo games, those are the ones that come to mind now, there's probably a couple that I'm forgetting, but those are my favorite Super Nintendo games. Super Nintendo is still one of my favorite systems, but I was a kid or a teenager when it came out, so there's that too. During a gathering of friends, life feeds someone to the Dice Tower may be the biggest guild on Board Game Geek. Do you know if this is indeed the case? As far as I know, it is the case. However, it's not like it's something I'm like, oh, I must have the biggest guild. It's not a big deal. I want to have an active, fun, welcoming guild. That's what I want. I don't necessarily care for the biggest. 
All right, uh, if you're just coming on now, I'm taking questions at the link in the video at a website called Q&A, K-I-U-N-E-I. -E so you can go there, ask questions, and vote up or down questions. I'm not answering all of them, but some of them. On your flight to New York for the Gathering of Friends, did you get recognized by anyone? <laughs> Passengers or staff, and did you play games in the plane? <laughs> I have only been recognized outside of gaming circles less than a handful of times, I think. Once at Universal Studios by one of the attendants. Once at a restaurant in the Walt Disney area. Once in the middle of the Atlanta airport, someone came up and talked to me. And twice on the cruise ship that I was on last year. Um, it's not that big of a deal. And I'm not, it's kind of, I have to say, it's kind of cool when it happens. I'm like, wow. But, you know, at a convention, you kind of expect it because people there play games and stuff. Outside, it's, it's kind of a neat thing. But, no, I don't ever get recognized. I'm, and I'm, I'm kind of glad. I, who wants to be that famous? I don't think anybody does. Well, maybe people do, but I think when they are that famous, they're not. Oh. As someone fairly new to hobby, I find myself wanting an existing expansion to a base game I've just tried out. What would you recommend as so many plays to have before tempting yourself with new stuff? Um, I would, uh, it, that's up to you, really. I would always play the game once before I get an expansion, at least. But, I mean, if you're sitting there going, oh, I must have this expansion, I guess, get it. I would go watch the reviews. I would ask other people who have the game, like, how important do you think this expansion is? But that's really one of those questions that's up to you. Oops. All right. Had to do a bit of banning there. No, wait, I don't have to do that much at all. It's glad. But when spammers show up, they spam up. Let's see here. What are your favorite classic novels? Okay, that's a good question. Classic novels. Because there's a lot of classic novels that I don't like. I would say almost Anything by Dickens. Oh, I'm not so big a fan of uh, Great Expectations. Uh, I just I like my stuff to end ha happier. Um, David Copperfield by far. Love that story. It's long and it's rambling, but I love it. King Solomon's Mines. I love that. A lot of these old stories are long and rambling. King Solomon's Mines is a great classic that I enjoy. Robinson Crusoe. Not Robinson Crusoe. That's, a, that's okay. I'm sorry. Treasure Island. Uh, Treasure Island, um, what other classics do I like? Anything by Jules Verne, pretty much. Um, anything by Dickens. Uh, I like Pride and Prejudice. It's a good book. I enjoy that one. Um, not the classic books. Boy, I've, I've sure read a lot of them. I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm, I've just become more of a short story guy. Um, although nowadays I'm reading through a series of novels right now called Sten, S-T-E-N, which I'm enjoying, science fiction. Can I rank the Viticulture Tuscany modules from best to worst? I don't think I can do that, but I think I mentioned which ones were my favorite in the expansion of that. So you can go watch my expansion. I tell you which ones I like and which ones I don't. Do you have to deal with many trolls on the Board Game Geek Dice Tower Guild? No, not really. Um, I'm pretty happy for that. I mean, you really have to go out of your way to find that guild and come in it and register and all that. And sometimes people get a little heated over stuff, but for the most part, I don't find many trolls there at all. In which ways have you improved as a YouTube personality reviewer over the years? As a YouTube personality? I don't know if I've improved at all there. As for... Um, I'm going to bring this back a little bit because it bothers me that my hat's not on the shot. But... Um, as a reviewer, I mean, the more games I play, the better I get at reviewing them because the more I know about gaming, uh, I'm able to, I don't know, I mean, I guess, I'm, I don't know how I'm getting better. I'm just trying to improve myself all the time. Uh, yeah, that's not happening. Let's see. Let's not go through all these... Uh, see here 
is it worth changing to YouTube as soon as you usually do? A lot of questions you answer on YouTube are ones from farther down the Q&A list. Well, it, I don't, I, it, it's not that it's uh, not worth doing or not. I just did this so that we can please everybody because some people cannot access Q&A from the YouTube channel. And I also do like being on the YouTube channel because I can see other comments that people are making and there's a little bit more freeform. And I like both methods. I like people voting for stuff and I like this. And if your question doesn't get voted up on Q&A, I apologize. But that just seems to be the way that it works. Um, I play games with a married couple and the wife often bullies her husband into trading resources with her, like in Catan, or not taking cards she wants splendor, then she wins. Should I protest at my own peril or just let it happen? Well, you, as you said, you're going to protest at your own peril. Uh, in that kind of situation, I don't know what I would say to do. I, I might talk to her and say, you're not making this fun for me at all because of this, this, and this. Um, or better yet, I think you might just find it because if you have a married couple and you say, um, to one of them that they're doing something wrong, the other one's going to back them up probably, and it's just not you're not going to come out of that very well. I think, I, I, it's and you don't definitely don't want to go to the other one and say, oh, your wife is doing this and it's annoying me. That's never a good thing to happen either. Other than a board game convention, what convention do you most want to go to? Um, definitely, I want to go to a video audio convention, and I may actually work that in my schedule next year. Uh, it is kind of important that we get better at this stuff, and so I'm going by what I see on the internet, going to a trade show where they're showcasing equipment and you know cameras and lighting and streaming and all that stuff would be really useful, I think, for me to go and just learn more about it. And let's see here. Have you ever seen another man's hat and thought, I want it, give it to me? <laughs> I, I have seen some nice hats. Uh, Mike Fitzgerald at the Gathering of Friends was wearing a very nice fedora. Is there a color that is not yet in your hat collection? Uh, I'm always looking for new color fedoras. Like, I don't have an orange fedora yet. I would love an orange fedora, and I love a purple fedora. Um, I don't think I have a good purple hat, actually, besides baseball caps. Um, those are the colors I've looked for. I'm also looking for a nice black cowboy hat. I haven't found the one I want yet. Uh, let's see. If you could travel back in time 100 years and give the people of that time any five games today, when you return to the present time, the hobby had advanced exponentially, what games would they be and why? Well, okay, let's take out the culture part of the thing, right? Because who knows how the culture would receive it. But I would take the games that I consider to be the ones that change the industry the most. I take back Dungeons and Dragons. I would take back Magic the Gathering. I would take back Settlers of Catan. I would take back Dominion, maybe. That one's kind of iffier at that point. And I would take Shadows over Camelot. Cooperative games. Who knows? I'd come back, or Pandemic, maybe, instead of Shadows. Uh, let's see here. What was my experience at Snakes and Lattes? This person says, I'm Canadian. Huzzah! And I love Snakes and Latte's funny, knowledgeable, and laid-back vibe. I'm convinced that their style brings loads of new people to the hobby. What was your experience there and with Canadian gamers in general? i got to be honest here. I was wondering about this. Like, when I went to Canada, would everybody be different there? The Canadian gamers were super friendly, but the New York gamers were super friendly too. And I don't know that, like, when you cross a line that there's suddenly a difference there. I did not notice anything. But I wasn't there super long either. Snakes and Lattes Game Cafe is a really wonderful place. I highly recommend it. It's nice. They're polite. They're friendly. They are going to grow the hobby. Um, they are the best board game cafe I've been to. They are. Easy. And I've been to a lot in Korea. Replace one game score track with a Snakes and Ladders board. No, that would be horrific. Nobody would ever play any game with a Snakes and Ladders board. Um, what are you looking forward to at the UK Games Expo? Well, honestly, the thing I'm looking most forward to at the UK's Games Expo is the UK. 
However, we're starting to go through the different uh, publishers that are there. We'll be doing some videos about things that we're looking forward to and what we see, like a preview video of sorts, and you'll see that come out over the month of May. Right now, this weekend is F2Z. The weekend after that is Cool Mini or Not. And then we got a couple weeks before the UK Gaming Expo. So in those couple weeks, you'll see a video about what's coming out. Oh, let's see here. What are your early picks for most innovative game of the year? There is no possible way I can answer that. Again, anything game of year related in 2016 cannot even be remotely looked at until August, late August at the earliest. Right now, I've still seen very few games that have come out in 2016. So we're still waiting to see the games. Speaking of which, we will be announcing the Dice Tower Awards nominations this week. Uh, my plan at this point is to announce it Saturday. So just keep an eye out for that. What are your thoughts on the list of games chosen for Tabletop Season 4? They seem like fine games. There's a couple games on there that I was like, huh. I didn't know. Yeah, that just seems like an interesting Like Monarchs, for example. I'm like, huh, okay. Um, but... I have no problem. It is interesting. He's picked some games. Like he said, he's deliberately breaking his own rules. Like Fury of Dracula is one game that he said he wouldn't have done in the past. And there's a couple games that I'm, I'm curious, will that game look good on video? But hey, who knows? I'm always glad to see. It looks like a diverse selection of games. So I'm sure they're fine. All right, folks, I apologize to all those people who are still typing questions in the Q&A, but we are done with Q&A. We are going to move over to the YouTube channel, and I'll answer any questions there that I wish to answer. Um, so if you have any questions, you can ask them in YouTube starting now, and I will answer some of those. And again, don't worry if your questions don't get answered. I do enough of these Q&As that at some point you'll probably get your question answered, I guess. And if I never answer it, like after 30 or 40 times, then, then maybe I'm never going to answer it too, I guess would be the thing. I, that happens sometimes. Hey, I got a new shirt, the new red. I got a red uh, Dice Tower shirt and a purple one. Uh, are we going to Origins this year? We are. Tom, when you were a school teacher, did you teach your own kids ever? I did not. Favorite flavors of ice cream? Cookie dough, normal one, and then I get my own custom one made. Lots of fruits and cookie dough somehow, but usually. Pie, key lime, for sure. Cake, uh, black forest cake. What are we going to do about Munchkin? I would imagine nothing. Play it or don't play it, I suppose. I still don't know any <laughs> people are I <laughs> I know that people want me to come out and like say fight Asmodee fight the power but I just I'm just not going to do that. I, I know that that's what people want me to do but um, there's nothing I, I don't think we're going to know honestly at this point how the Asmodee thing is going to affect the industry as a whole until a year from now. We just saw, um, was it Reaper, not Reaper Miniatures, but another company followed their lead, and now we just saw Yellow announce that they're going to delay their games for two weeks um, uh, on, on the online stores and then put them in the local stores. So changes are happening. Whether these changes will be permanent or not, I don't know, but there's no way to know. When I go to the next convention, I'll be feeling people out and seeing, but I honestly don't know. Uh, let's see here. Whew. Lots and lots of questions. Since Z and Sam became employees, do you think your taste in pop culture or games have converged? No, nah, I don't think so. I mean, there may be times where they say, hey, you should watch this, or I say, hey, watch this, but not very often. I don't think so. We all watch what we want to watch in pop culture. Um...
When playtesting a game, when do you consider a game to be solid or perfected? Never. And now listen to me, and this is important when you're playtesting your game. There comes a point where you're going to have to say it's good enough because it's never going to be perfect in your eyes. And if it is, then there's probably something wrong with you as a designer because you're always just going, I don't know, I could make some more changes. There comes a point where when people say this is a solid, great game, let it go. Because some people just keep developing and developing and developing and developing and developing and the game, it just keeps changing. You're like, well, boy, I really enjoyed it. Why did you change it? So, so that's what I would recommend there. What's the newest game in my collection? The newest game in my collection is Doug and Melissa's Suspend. My review of that will be going up this week, but that is the newest game in my collection. I've added a few expansions to my collection this week too, but those don't count. How often do you find a game that gets your seal of excellence? I would say it's one out of five or six, maybe? That sounds reasonable. Maybe it's less than that. Uh, I, I usually review about 10 games a week, and I would say at most to get the seal of excellence. Sometimes more than that, but usually less. Um, yeah, that's okay. So let's say, for example, I'm looking at next week's games, which you can't see here. Seal of excellence, but that's an expansion, so does that count or not? Approval, Seal of Excellence, but it's a reprint, so. Huh. Approval, Horrible. Okay, Horrible. Good, good, good. Yeah, so there's no Seal of Excellence coming next week for my games reviewed, but there's, except for one, which is a reprint, so I already like the original game, and one is an expansion. An expansion people have been asking me to do for a while, too. So, um, who knows? Do you think it would be good if the box is stressed the best quantity of players for that particular game? Probably, but no company's ever going to do that because they're basically saying it's not as good with these number of players and then less people would buy the game. How often does Arcane Wonders consult you about production decisions for Dice Tower Essentials? Um, once a quarter maybe? Uh, they make a lot of choices without asking me, um, and a lot of decisions that uh, are made in the production line without really my input at all. Um, but I, I mean, I have say in them um, to some degree, but it's really their decisions and all the production um, that, that comes that, that the game comes out with. Ha. <laughs> There's another person asking me for another to redo the top 10 essential games every gamer should own. We are going to redo that when our current one hits a million views. That's when I will do it because I just want one video that has a million views. <laughs> so when that happens, I'll redo it. At the current rate that it's getting uh, views, that will be next year sometime, probably. Um... What do you have in the works for live shows and a Dice Tower cruise? Not a lot, really, because, well, I don't want to spend the whole time just doing, like, shows on the cruise. So we're going to do three shows. A uh, Dice Tower show, an opening show, and a, um, a game show. So we're going to do three shows. So I mean, maybe we'll do more as time goes by, but you would be surprised at how much work one show can be. So doing multiple shows a day would be very draining on everybody. And we just want to walk around and, and, and mingle with people and talk to them and play games with them. What's your favorite animal to see at the zoo? Monkeys, by far. Um, if I go to Barnes & Noble's event this weekend, should I be obligated to buy a game? I don't think you should ever be obligated to buy anything, but I would consider it. Why not support them? Um, some of you I can see do not watch my uh, board game breakfast because a lot of you ask me questions that are definitely uh, um, things I've done in my Tom Thinks as time goes by. Uh, let's see here. Ah, tips for approaching a game publisher. Listen to the Dice Tower podcast, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. We go over that in detail, actually. 
If you're beating someone at badly at a game, do you ever go easy on them over fear that they're having a bad time or just go for the throat? I almost never go for the throat. I don't see any reason to do that. If I'm beating someone pretty badly, then I'll try all kinds of weird, unusual uh, ways to win. Can you give us a little history about how the gang got together, specifically Z, Sam, Jason, and Eric? Well, Eric I met online through the Dice Tower itself. Sam I met at college. I met him <clears throat> my freshman year, and we were friends ever since, which is 21 years ago now, maybe? 17 plus 5, 22 years ago. And Z, I met when I came here to game at uh, Miami. I met him at one of the first meetup groups. What one person do you play with the most? It's probably a tie between Melody and Jason. <laughs> it's probably Melody, actually. Um... Are you interested in trying the Mayfair edition of Agricola to see if it can rejoin Cavernant in your collection? I'm interested in trying it. I have no aspirations other than that. I'm just going to see if it's good or not. I don't care if it joins my collection or not. Have you ever mixed Marvel with the other legendaries? I have not. I just haven't had a desire to. They have so much Marvel anyway. Have I played Happy Salmon yet? Says Tim Jeanette, who doesn't watch the reviews that are posted on our own channel. Tim. Watch our reviews from last week. Have you found any recent games that may be added to the Essentials line? Maybe, but not any very recent. The last game that I found that's going to go in the Essentials line was two months ago, possibly. The, the line now has so many backlogs of games that I'm not adding any new ones to it until those get printed. I mean, Onitama just came out. Uh, the Dice Tower Essentials line launched in July of 2014. It is almost two years from that point, and we've had two games come out in it. So I would prefer not to make the backlog too big. Um, did you get Twilight Struggle back? I thought you tossed it and kept 1989. I did not. I have Twilight Struggle for sure. Favorite Planeswalker color to play in Magic the Gathering? Um, the board game. It doesn't matter. They don't feel differentiated enough yet. So I'll say white, I guess. But they need more expansion for that game. That just irritates me. That, that game is this close to me kicking out my collection because I like it and I want to play more of it, but there's not enough deck building possibilities in the game right now. It's like, ooh, you have three squads. Which two would you like to bring? Lame. Come on, come on, Hasbro. I, I, I just don't understand it. I really don't. They make Magic the Gathering expansions all the time. They know the demand is there, and they publish those and get people excited about those. And each set has lots of deck building possibility. And then they release these small expansions that add a few things. That's the first expansion ad. It's a good expansion ad stuff, and I like it, but it's not enough. If that had been included with the base game, I would have probably said there's not enough yet. Whatever. They're, it's not going to do well because... Just irritating. Um, do you think you could have beaten Sam at Memoir 44 last week? Yes, maybe. I mean, I did. I mean, the internet was helping me, but I would have played very similar to the internet. I would have made maybe a few minor changes. Uh, one thing the internet did that I would not have done is they took the, the group of four tanks and just drove it right up and let Sam shoot at him. I would have probably just sat there and let Sam come into my guns. Make him come get me. Uh, can't wait to watch Sam play Robinson Crusoe. Isn't that happening in May? Um, no, it's happening in July. <laughs> a lot of these questions are like the same old questions that people ask. I'm looking for interesting questions, folks. 
Give me some interesting questions, some new things. Um, let's see here. I apologize, guys. I'm just looking for stuff like not... You know, not your typical, what's your least favorite game? What's your favorite game? What's your favorite theme and all that? Who would, famous people would you play with? Those are, you know, that's, uh, yeah. Let's look at some different things. Question, I'm thinking of buying Abyss. What's the replay value on this game? I think the replay value is pretty good. It's still my collection, and I don't keep games in my collection I think that have low replay value because I want to play games more often. I like it. Um, so, yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how tired are you at this moment? Uh, with 10 being drop dead, falling asleep, and 1, I'm uh, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, I would say I'm on a 7 right now, maybe. I normally go to bed right at 11.30 or so, so I'm past my bedtime. I'll make it. It's not that big of a deal, but yeah, I'm a little tired. I remember you saying at one point that you had sort of cooled on Martin Wallace games. Has that changed? Yeah, I'm still a little cool on his games. Uh, although, if he keeps making lighter games, like I saw his Route 666 game he just announced, and there's the other one, uh, his, I forget, the, 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 the game that's coming um, from uh, Space Cowboys. I really like that one. It was a very light game, though, and I think he, I like his light games better than his heavier ones. Ships was kind of middle, and I enjoyed that one, too, so maybe I'm turning around on him. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Where do you get the audio clips for the Dice Tower intros, outros? I get those at smartsound.com. <laughs> I'm still looking for um, some good questions here. Wow. Okay. Um, I apologize, guys. These are kind of just some pretty much normal questions. I want to answer something that's different. And also, I should mention, as I always do, that asking a question 15 times is not going to ever get it answered. In fact, that makes me deliberately not answer it the second times through. Hmm. How far would you drive to reach a game group? Well, that's interesting. I think an hour, because that's how far I go now to cool stuff, and it is pretty much the limit, I think, what I would go to. I might go to a farther group than that, maybe if it was a special event, a big day thing, but I very rarely would do something like that. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Driving really far, honestly. An hour seems pretty far to me now. What do you think we can expect with True Dungeon being moved to the stadium at Gen Con? I think we can expect good things from that. I think it, it, the exhibition hall is going to get bigger. I'm really excited about that. I don't think there's a lot of crossover between RPGs and True Dungeon, things like that, and board gamers. So having it in an out-of-the-way position, not that I want them out of the way, but it's in a different location. So... There's not a lot of crossover, like, oh, the stadium's a little bit farther to walk. Well, that's okay because there's going to be people who are going to go out of their way to go there. And, I, and I'm hoping that it actually cuts down traffic in the hallways. I think that that will be a good thing. I could be wrong, but I think we'll be good. Rank the Rocky movies. Well, my apologies, I still have not seen Creed yet. It's really high on my list to see. But four is my favorite. It's four, two, one. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me re rephrase that. Four, six, two, one, three. Then a whole bunch of other movies. Then five. <laughs> I don't like five. Um...
<laughs> Doing more videos outside, has your opinion on wooden slat park benches changed? It has not. <laughs> but that's a very meta question, but I appreciate stuff like that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. How much fun did you have razzing Jason at the Jays game when the Yankees lost? Oh, a lot of fun. I mean, uh, I, was, I would have razzed any Yankees fan at that point in time. Feels good to be on home turf, right? It was just fun. It was all in good fun, though. Everyone was razzing the Yankees fans, if there was any, because you're either a Yankees fan or you hate them. Do you think Quadropolis has the potential to be a classic gateway-style game like Ticket's Ride? No, it does not. There are some games that, are, that you can just, as soon as you play, you're like, wow, this is a classic. And I, I, I do not explain that. I felt it when I played Carcassonne. I felt it when I played um, uh, Ticket to Ride. I, play, I felt it when I played Dominion. I did not feel it when I played Pandemic. I probably should have, though. Um, I felt it when I played Coup, actually. Um, but... Uh, for Quadropolis, I love Quadropolis, and it's in my collection, but I didn't feel that, oh, this is a classic gateway game. No. What's my favorite hobby other than board gaming? Probably music. I like listening to music a lot. Let's see here. Wow, I'm really behind in questions, so I can really, I can really zoom down here then. All right, I apologize. This is probably really boring to watch later on, guys, and I'm really sorry. Maybe I'm being more picky because it's late at night. I don't know what the deal is here. Um, there's just a lot of uh, questions here that are not very good questions. Are you wearing pajama pants right now? I am. <laughs> I... I didn't mean to stand up in the middle of this, but it happened. So I'll have to, <laughs> but I'm going to bed right after this. So it is what it is. Um, these are my Pillsbury Doughboy pajama pants. I got them. It was, an, it was an odd gift from one of my senior classes that I was a teacher of. They gave me pajama pants. So, all right, cool. How much take that is too much in a game? When take that takes someone out of the game completely, or I think when take that causes other people to not have fun. When take that completely destroys plans that someone else has made and there's nothing they can do to respond. Unfun behavior. That's too much take that, I think. Is Room 25 being reprinted? It is. It should be out in a couple months. Do you collect anything other than board games? other than dice and components. I don't really like collecting stuff because I think collecting stuff is kind of just a, um, I collect, I'm collecting pictures, right? I have uh, artwork all over the house. I'm slowly building up a, a gallery of geek art, I guess. I'm always looking for geek art that shows cool landscapes, that's what I like. Unusual things, game art I like. I also like artwork that shows strong, uh, female heroines that so my girls can see those I think they're cool unfortunately most fantasy artwork with females is pretty bad honestly uh, so when I find a, a piece of good artwork I'm always picking it up this year when I go to Gen Con uh, going to the artist alley will be one of the first things I do would you ever consider playing a game of diplomacy I would not um, what's your favorite sport to watch? Baseball. I've come to this conclusion. We were just talking about this. I was talking about this with someone today. I like watching soccer and football. Basketball's okay. But I like watching soccer and football. I like watching the plays unfold and them occurring. But baseball is like watching a board game. It's fascinating to me. One thing at a time. This person, I like to watch when the ball is hit, where everybody in the field runs to. I find that fascinating, what they're supposed to do. And it's play by play. I like the fact that in baseball you could be losing 20 to 1 in the ninth inning with two outs and have three strikes. I mean, sorry, two strikes. And you still can come back. You probably won't, but you can. No other sport has that sort of a thing that I know of. 
well, maybe uh, um, Cricket or something. I don't know. Will Clue the Great Museum Cape ever get a reprint? I don't think so, but you never know. But I don't think so. Where's my favorite guilty pleasure place to eat? Probably um, Taco Bell, I guess. I really like Taco Bell. I think it's funny whenever you say some things and then people get all upset. Like, I just said Taco Bell. Someone's be like, do you know what they put in their food? Yeah, but it was delicious. Um, just like I just said, Rocky IV was my favorite Rocky movie. Some people were like, oh, how could you possibly? Because I'm a red-blooded American who was born in the late 70s and grew up in the Cold War. And so Rocky IV brings back those memories. Woo! Beat the communists. I don't know. Maybe, I guess that's what it is. And I really like um, Dolph Lundgren as a bad guy. How often I lose the melody? Probably we're 50-50 on that. Although, let's see, we just played Magic the Gathering the other day and I beat her two straight games in a row. And then we played uh, Mage Wars Academy and she beat me. What games would you like to beat Rodney at when he comes for a visit in May? Well, actually, I feel pretty confident that uh, I was just talking to Cool Manier Not, and I'm going to be beating Rodney in a game of Arcadia Quest at the Cool Manier Not Expo. And I think it's going to be recorded, too, just to show how badly he gets beaten. And I apologize because I, I normally don't, um, I save my beatdowns for people who really need one. Um, and so sometimes the, it just got to come out. I'm going to even, I'm going to bring a Tom Rick figure in my pocket too because got to, now I'm going to beat you without Tom Rick. How's that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, for May, yeah, I know. I really need to get that list together though. If you stop doing Dice Tower, what job would you do? Let's say no teaching. Well, thanks for taking that out for me. I don't know what I would do if I stopped doing Dice Tower. I really don't know. Might get back into ministry, go be a missionary overseas. Um, get involved in the board game industry some other way if I stop doing Dice Tower. So you're going to be in Quebec for the F2Z event. Have you thought about visiting Montreal? Well, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be there long enough. I'm coming in on Friday uh, afternoon and I'm leaving Saturday early evening. So I'm not going to be, I'm going to be there a little bit over 24 hours. So I don't think I'll have any time for sightseeing at all. I'm just going to be there to help out F2Z and whatever they need me to do. Let's see here. What are you looking forward to most at Dice Tower Con? Uh, the game shows. I love doing game shows. We really, I'm really happy with the game show that we did at the Gathering of Friends, so I want to do a game show very similar to that, Dice Tower Con. And also, I have some cool ideas. If you had to travel by car from Florida to California, you couldn't change seats. Who would you choose to sit next to, Sam, Z, or Jason? Definitely Jason, because he's the smallest guy. Why would I not want to sit next to the smallest guy? But it doesn't really matter, because if we were traveling that far, I would sleep about 80% of the time, and then Sam and Z would yell at me, for falling asleep in the middle of conversations, which I do all the time. I just, when I'm in a car, I fall asleep. Have you heard anything about the TAC abstract game? Not only have I heard about it, but I've played it and I enjoy it. It's a pretty brain burning game. I was pretty impressed with it. I liked it. Uh, let's see. Have I ever been to a board game auction? I have. I've been to a couple board game auctions. They were in Korea, and I've also been to some at Gen Con. The ones at Gen Con, I just sit there and go, hmm, because they're bidding on these crazy obscure things, and people are paying crazy prices for them, and I'm thinking, really? You're going to pay that much for that? I went to one at Origins one time where I was interested in the games, and after a while, I realized that I was never going to get those games for any kind of deal because there was a couple people there who worked for places like Troll and Toad, and they were just going to bid the amount that I would be willing to pay for it, and then they were going to sell it for a much higher markup online. And I was like, oh, all right, fine, that's what you're going to do. I'm not interested. In Korea, when I was first getting into the designer board games there, man, I went to two auctions. 
One was where they started at a high number and went down and the first person to raise it got it. And I was so excited being there. I was like, ah, I won Umreif and Brighton there at an auction. And then later on, Chinatown came available at an auction and that was just a yell out the number type auction. And that one was also very excited for me because I really wanted Chinatown at the time. Those are the only two games I think I've ever won in an auction. If you couldn't live in Florida any longer for whatever reason, what state would you live in? Well, I would, you know, I, I'm going to be happy wherever I go, right? No matter where I go, I'm going to be happy in that state. I really like Florida here, but I mean, any state you can find things to be happy with. States without snow are nicer, I guess, but you know, um, grass is greener where you're at. It really is. Wherever you can be, there's going to be fantastic things there. Should the developers consider tournament play when making a game? I don't think so, unless you're deliberately designing a game for that, but I wouldn't worry about it. Have you seen a Doctor Strange trailer? You know what? I haven't watched I watched it on my phone, but it was small without sound, so I was like, oh, okay. I was just going to see who the bad guys were, but it didn't really show a whole lot. So I'd like to see more than that. Um, I will be in the Miami area for work in the summer, says Christopher. Christopher, email me and I'll get you hooked up with our meetup group. And that goes for anybody. If you're ever coming to Miami area, email me uh, and, or look up Miami meetups and come out to one of them. Have you seen the new pen that writes in 3D? I have. I think that's a pretty cool thing. I would like to see more than that. Um, who cuts your children's hair? My wife does. Not me, that's for sure. Do you wish the USA celebrated Teacher's Day? I really do. Uh, USA has Teacher's Month, I think, in May or April or something like that, or Teacher's Week, but it's not the same as Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day is a great thing in Korea, and we should celebrate teachers. Were you ever in a fight as a kid? I was. Did you win? Uh, my mother interfered and then I was embarrassed for weeks. But probably for the best. Um, if you were transported to the last game you played, how would you fare? What was the last game I played? I would be uh, caught as a spy. The last game I played, well, I didn't play it, I kind of ran it, was Witness. No, no, never mind, the last game I played was Faces. But we played Witness, I taught my family Witness before that. They had a good time playing Witness. Or some of them did. <laughs> Holly keeps asking me, when are we going to play Witness again? When are we going to play Witness again? She really liked that whispering to other people. Um... Do you have a record player and or play vinyl? I know that it's the cool thing to listen to vinyl now and people love it for whatever reason but I honestly cannot maybe I have horrible hearing I cannot tell the any difference between vinyl and my amazing Sonos speakers that play directly off the internet and it almost comes across to me that vinyl is kind of a snooty thing where people are like, oh yeah, I listen to vinyl. Why would I care? I listen to cool music. I don't care what the source is as long as it sounds good. And MP3s and, and files sound pretty good. And there are people out there I think who, would, who argue to death over it. I've met them and they oh no, no, there's just a better quality. I guess, but if I can't hear it, why would I go out and buy an arc archaic record player that scratches records and that I have to actually move the needle to, to get to the things. Record players were cool. I had one when I was a kid. And I love listening to records, but electronic is so much cooler. Spotify is amazing. Love Spotify. First comic book you ever got? Bone. That's because I didn't get any comics when I was a kid, but I got Bone when I, when I was in college. First album you bought? It's a very similar thing. I, um, a soundtrack to a movie probably, but I don't remember which one. I haven't played Hearthstone for a long time. Let's see here. Is 
if we started, if you started balding, would you shave your head or just wear a hat at all times? I just wear hats like I do now. Have you ever used a hat to hide from people? No, I'll take a hat off. My hats are pretty obvious that I'm, I'm where I'm at. Um, in Formula D, how bad do you usually damage your car? Usually I destroy my car in Formula D. Would you actually enjoy watching a real life sport of chaos ball, slaughter ball, and the like? Probably not. I don't want to watch people get killed on a field like the gladiator type stuff from ancient Rome. I mean, it's fun in games and you're playing it and like, ah, this guy just, he killed that guy. Maybe a, a, in an abstract where you're not actually seeing it, seeing it. No, that seems kind of, kind of gross. Is asymmetrical play more interesting? Not always, but I think it often is because I like to have a different play style than someone else. In fact, the expansion I'm reviewing next week, not this week, but next week, is an asymmetrical expansion. It takes a game that was symmetrical and adds asymmetric to it, and I love it because it does that. Um, what games would you introduce to students of video game design if they haven't played board games before? I think I would use Dominion because that one just seems to hit a chord with people for some reason. But then I would like look at maybe this the different video games that exist and try to find a board game. Robinson Crusoe is a good one. I think that board game, that video game people might understand. I might even use Video Game High School, the little small board game. That's kind of an, an interesting thing that might get them into the gaming or that new uh, Porto Preto reprint from uh, Ignacy that's about designing video games. Something that they that they're kind of know a little bit about, but shows them good board games too. Who was the best James Bond? I don't know who the best James Bond is. My favorite is Roger Moore. Um. <laughs> Knowing your own weaknesses, what superpower do you think you should not have? I definitely should not have telepathy, for sure. I would take over the world. Did you ever do those crazy math trades? Yes. Math trades are a very interesting thing. If you don't know what a math trade is, a math trade is on Board Game Geek, they have a, uh, these lists. And a math trade, you basically say, I'm going to trade this game, this game, and this game away. And then other people say the same thing. They make this big, long list. And then you, at the end, when the list is closed, then you go in, in, in this little program and you say, I'm willing to trade this game for any of the following games. And you pick, like, I don't know, three or maybe 70 games, and you pick all these games. Then the computer goes and runs everything, and you will find out if you made a trade or not. Now, what that means is if I say I'm willing to trade Scotland Yard and I'll get Catan back, you, that may actually happen. But I'm, you may be trading Scotland Yard to Billy Bob, who has Ticket to Ride, who trades his to Sally, who has this Carcassonne, who trades it to Susan, who has this game, and it eventually comes back to you. And so it's very complex, but you don't need to worry about the complexity. You just get a message that says, you give your game to this person, you will get this game from this person. So it seems more complex than it is. And the way that they have it set up on Board Game Geek and the Geek List and everything, it is pretty confusing, but there are some tutorials to walk you through it. I just wish it was easier. I haven't done it for a while because I don't need more games. Um... Hmm. All right, you know what? Yeah, see, I, I, it, it seems like with every question that there is, there's always an accepted question, an answer, and there's a non one. It's like for, for like James Bond, you're allowed to say Sean Connery. If you don't say Sean Connery, then people are like, how, how could you think such a thing? It's just the way I liked it. My, I wanted my James Bond to be kind of smooth and, and uh, the way Roger Moore, but he's also the first James Bond I've ever watched. So that has a lot to do with these things, you know? Um, I just think it's interesting people ask you a question like what's your favorite and you know that no matter what you answer people are going to give you a bad answer for it. Which of course is the reason we do our top tens because we know no one's ever going to agree with them ever anyway. Um, I actually have my uh, top uh, 
Alphabet's list here. These are all the top 10 games. I did P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. They're all done. I just recorded P, Q, R, and, and S. Um, S and Q were both difficult. Q because I barely got 10 games. S because there were so many good games. P was also a ton of good games. Um, X was, I mean, a Q was not the hardest letter. I think the hardest letter was probably Z. X was not as hard as you might think. Um, actually, Q might have been even easier than X. I don't know. But for most letters, it's not that hard. I played so many different games at this point. But it is interesting to see this. And it's interesting that it's done. We'll see what I go to next time. Um, so. Oh, yeah, there's my list of top 10 games, most played games. We're going to be recording that tomorrow, and we'll be publishing that later on this week. Um... Did I see a difference between Canadian and American gamers? Not really. Gamers are gamers. I, I don't really notice a, a huge difference between like European gamers and American gamers and, and, and Asian gamers. I, I just haven't noticed that big of a difference. Um, well, you know what? I guess that's it for now. I probably should go to bed. It is 10 after 12. And this was not a very interesting Q&A, and I'm really sorry about that. I do not wish to blame the question askers at all. Maybe it's just because I'm tired. Maybe it's because I'm wiped from doing a bunch of reviews today. Um, here's what I re here's what I the reviews I recorded today that you'll see coming out this week. Doug and Melissa Suspend, the uh, Coup Reformation expansion, the Back to the Future board game, Spheres of Influence, Perspective, the Treasure of 13 Islands, um, the Heralds of Dreadful and Terror of the Mist expansions for Battle Lore, Valeria, the, some, ex, some lieutenants for Descent, and a game called Rockwell. So all that you'll be seeing coming out. I have some other things we need to get going. I will be working on the Q&A fact at some point. And we're still trying to get Kickstarter stuff wrapped up. Dice Tower Awards, we like to announce them this Saturday, the nominations at least. Um, we probably will. It, it, it's, uh, I just have to get that together and figure out the best way to announce those. And I uh, might be starting a new video series this week that I've been thinking about doing for a while. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Okay. Well, either way, guys, I appreciate you coming on, asking questions. You all have a fantastic evening. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do